Welcome to Data Science 1, Probability, Marginal Distributions. Okay, what are we going to need to know to get through this? We're going to need to know what a cumulative distribution function is, a probability density function, and a joint probability density function. Okay, in the past few videos, we've been looking at joint distributions of x and y for both continuous and discrete, and how to get the probabilities out of those distributions. But the question is, is what if I have a joint distribution, but... I want to know the distribution of one of the variables regardless of what the other variable is. Okay, and this is the idea of a marginal distribution. We're basically getting rid of one uh, of the variables by averaging it out is essentially what we're going to do. So let's go back to a previous example. Um, this is the one where we had the grades. I know this was A, B, C, D, E or no, not E, A, B, C, D, F, and this was male, female. So we want to look at the, uh, get the distribution of just X without regard to Y. So we want to get rid of Y, just look at X. Well, this is pretty easy to do. Basically, you just add up across the genders, okay, for each of the given probabilities. So here's uh, 0 0.1660 plus uh, 0 0.1840 is 0 0.3500. And you do this all the way across here and get each of the values. And basically what you're doing is you're accumulating all the probability that's associated with that value of x, regardless of what value of y was associated with it. Okay, then we would not show the the old probabilities, the joint distribution anymore, because we're only interested in the marginal distribution. And you could do the same for y. And here, this is where you sort of begin to see where the name comes from. Where do these end up showing? The bottom margin and on the side margin. That's why they're called marginal distributions. And if you add this up, you'll get 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And if we were to put both of these marginal distributions down, this is what it would look like. So we'd have this marginal distribution, which we calculated before, and this one we just calculated. So it's pretty easy from this perspective to do this, especially in the discrete sense. Okay, so basically all we did was just, we just added up the variable or averaged or summed the variable that we didn't want, right? We just said, okay, I want X, so get rid of Y. I want Y, so get rid of X. And that's where most people get confused is they can't realize that what they're getting rid of is what goes here. All right, now for the continuous case, um, here we have, well, it's gonna, we're going to integrate it out instead of just summing it out. So we're just going to integrate uh, across y to get x, and we're going to integrate across x to get to y. Uh, so these are pretty easy to do. Let's look at an example. Here's an example we had last time. I've got all the values in it, but we're interested in coming up with a marginal with respect to x. So we're going to integrate with respect to y. And if you go through this, this is our density here. It goes from 0 to 3. Uh, you see 4 over 135 is a constant, pulls out. We get xy plus x times y squared over 2, evaluating that we're you know doing this across y between 0 and 3. So we get 4 over 135 times the quantity 3x plus 9 halves x. Put all that together. And finally, you're down to 2 ninths x when x is between 0 and 3. This here is the marginal distribution for x. And that's why there's this little x down here, or not a little x, this big x in the denominator because there's an xy here, there's an x here. And this is to show that it came from a joint distribution. So if you see one of these, you might want to ask, where's the joint distribution? We can do the same thing for y, right? We can get the marginal for y out, f of y of y. But this time we integrate out x. I'm not going to show all the steps, but you end up with 2 over 15 times 1 plus y. And that's where y is between 0 and 3. Okay, the other one we can also do is we can come up with a marginal CDF. Once I have the PDF, I can come up with the CDF. And this is done by integrating from negative infinity to y of our marginal distribution. So here it goes from 0 to y, 2 over 15, 1 plus t, right? We can't put y here because then it becomes ill-defined. 
So we have t dt. We plug all of this in. We get t plus t squared over 2 and the quantity 2 over 15 out front, evaluated at 0 and y. So we end up with 2y plus y squared divided by 15 is our marginal CDF in this case. All right, so we've looked at these ideas here uh, for the continuous case. Just add them up for the in, uh, for the uh, continuous case. We are going to integrate them to discrete case. You add them up. Super easy to do. Well, I won't say super easy. It can be a little bit tedious, but it's rather straightforward unless you have some really weird computations that you need to worry about. But overall, this is not that difficult to do, and we're going to need this as we move to the next video, which is on conditional distributions, and we'll... See you there.